Hi YouTube, welcome back to my channel. My name is Cassie and you're watching The Victorian Thimble. Today, we're gonna look at the planning process for a late 1880s Victorian corset. Let's get started. When you purchase a download pattern from Truly Victorian, you have a couple of options. You can actually save it to a USB stick or something and take it to your local uh, business printer and they can print it out for you large format if you're willing to take the time and spend just a couple of dollars to do it. I've done a lot of large print drawings in my past for a job that I had and I can tell you that for what you need to print out for this, your local printer is probably going to charge you eight to ten dollars if you can find someone that can output large format sheets for you. You want one of those little business places that serve the general public, not an actual printer printer, but you can do that if you want. I tend to opt for the more affordable option, which means I print all this out and then all these pages here, you can see how they are numbered. All of this, I will actually just lay it out on the table, tape it together and assemble it myself. I don't mind taking the time to do it, to be honest. I just put a good movie on in the background and, or I watch some YouTube myself while I work. I do that a lot actually. And I just assemble the pattern and it's a very nice way to spend some time and get your pattern for a cheaper price. is you are going to have to cut out and assemble this pattern and get it ready to go. When preparing to make a pattern, you will need to use a sizing chart like this that you can see provided in the directions. You can choose your size based off of your measurements and you're gonna be able to choose the pattern and get this thing going. So let's talk corset talk for a few minutes. I've never made one, have you? I've never made a corset before. I've always, always been intrigued with them. And honestly, guys, in this last year, as I discovered that this history bounding community and the historical sewing or costuming community, it's actually huge. And there's so much space in this community to join in and belong and to express yourself. That's when it started to occur to me that it's like, oh my goodness, I can make these things and enjoy them. I don't just have to watch in a movie and contemplate, what does it feel like to wear a corset? What does that look like under your clothes? I'm finally gonna get these experiences and I'm documenting it here on YouTube so that you can join that journey with me. So, so far we've covered that you need to purchase and download a pattern, but there's a few other planning pieces involved. Let's take a look. So I did mostly follow the supplies direction supplied in the truly Victorian corset making pattern. It seemed to me that that's where the sizes and requirements were made. So the things that we need to make a Victorian corset are the fabric, the accessories, and all those vital underpinnings, the hardware that makes a corset perform. So here's what I found, and I'm kind of excited about this actually. So online, there's quite a few corset suppliers, but I am Canadian, I live in Canada, and so many things are based off of USA purchase and pricing. I knew I really wanted a Canadian supplier, so I'm not paying the duty taxes at the border, the uh, exchange of the US dollar to the Canadian dollar, all these things, right? So you can imagine my excitement when I found a supplier that is two hour drive from where I live. So and that place is called Farthing Gills Corset Making Supplies.
Let's unbox this together and see what all I got to come in for making this corset. It did come in a nice professional box with professional packaging. I was impressed with the neatness of the order, how it was all laid out and I could see exactly what I purchased. They included a packing slip that simply showed all the things I purchased. They included a protective layer of bubble wrap. The child in me will be popping all these bubbles later. <laughs> So let's see what's in the box. So when making a corset, it is those foundation pieces that are the set apart pieces that's going to make the garment actually work and function the way you want. Boning that goes into channels that actually creates the shape and support of the garment and allows you to pull it tight is such an essential part. It is one of the most essential parts of making a corset. Anyone who does any reading would figure this out very, very quickly. So I did order two different kinds of boning. German made plastic whale boning is considered the correct weight and function that you need for a corset to operate for you correctly. Let's just open this and show you what it looks like. So it comes in a spool like this and I will just show you very up close here. So you can see here, I'm trying to give you a view or an angle of what the synthetic whale boning looks like. It's fairly thin, it's quarter of an inch. This is what's gonna be inserted into the channels of the corset to make the boning function. I also ordered another type of boning. Another type of boning that I ordered is called spring steel boning. I ordered three different sizes these came in sets of 10, and I'll just show you one of them to give you an idea here. You can see that it is a quarter of an inch in its diameter, or width, pardon me, and it is quite flexible. Right, the idea behind spring steel boning is it gives a, a really firm, steady base, but still flexes and allows the user to have some comfort. You can see it also comes with the ends are already tipped so that I don't have to do any maintenance on these pieces. I felt that uh, these were a very, very reasonable price. They're about $3 a bundle, and it gives me those extra pieces that I need. So I think that between, from what I have read in the directions, I'm pretty sure that between the busk, which is still arriving in the mail, the spring steel, straight steel pieces, and the flexible plastic whale boning. I think I'm gonna have enough supplies here to do all the foundation parts Another of the Another key corset. hardware piece that you're gonna need if you make a corset is something to lace it up with at the back. There are a few different options and I did buy two because I'm actually helping a friend with the project as well. So one option that you can do is ribbon. I have a friend who has a garment. We're gonna convert the back of this garment into a corset lace up style top and so my friend wanted ribbon to lace with, so I ordered this double-sided quarter-inch ribbon that's gonna go into that and lace that up very nicely. But any corset that you make, you could use two-sided quarter-inch ribbon if you wish, or even a thicker ribbon if you want. So this is one possibility that you can do. The other thing is your basic flat lacing corset supply, like this. Let me pull it out and show you here. So with this, it looks like shoestring um, type cording, really, except that it comes in a big, long, continuous measure so that you have, this is like 10 meters. This is enough, more than enough to do a corset adequately, very well. This also comes with some of this plastic tubing that you can work onto the end and you can melt it into place so that it has a tip like a shoelace so it won't keep unraveling. So the actual kit that you purchase comes with, oops, comes with just a little measure like this, enough to make two ends. But because I'm doing this for a friend as well, this was like a dollar, I ordered some extra tubing so that I could also do both projects. Super cheap, easy to do. 
Let's see what else. When making a corset, you can do a double layered corset where your boning channels become part of the seam work, but there are also single layer corsets that can be equally strong and do require boning channels. Since I paid for shipping and an order and this was not an expensive supply, I went on the side of caution and I ordered it. So this is simply some twill tape. It comes like this, there's 10 meters of it here. Let me just pull this out for you and show you the twill tape. Let me show you here. So I don't know if you can see here or not the texture, but it is like a herringbone type texture. It is just a twill tape, but it has some nice stiffness to it that's just gonna help build the support in that corset. So I also purchased this grommet kit from Farthingales in the size 00, which was the recommended size for the corset that I'm about to make. You can see that this comes with the two pieces to assemble the grommet, as well as the actual tool to assemble it with. The website was pretty clear that this is gonna get you through um, a handful of projects, several projects maybe, but that the actual tools that you install the grommets with, they are not intended for heavy duty long-term use. If you actually find yourself getting that much into assembling things that need grommets made, you would want to spend the $100 and invest in an industrial strength grommet assembly kit. However, this comes with enough grommets and tools that you should be able to use all this, possibly even a few more before you have to invest in a better tool. So I specifically ordered this to get the visual and the supplies and get the right idea of everything I need to make this corset. It's always what you actually assemble the corset with. Once you have your hardware, the fun part, of course, is choosing the fabric and the decorations and all of that. So I am using fabric that I've had on hand in the house for a while, but it just so happens to fit the criteria by which is required to assemble a corset. What I have here is a basic poplin cotton twill. You probably can't see in this lighting, but it does actually have a herringbone print or texture woven into it. It is a straight woven fabric. It it's really not very flexible, which is what you want for corset making. You want a nice tight weave that's gonna hold on to whatever you sew and let that corset perform as it's supposed to. So I did purchase this beautiful, soft, pale pink years ago, and it's just been sitting in my stash. I'm ready to do something with it. I bought enough here actually to make a proper button down shirt for work. So there's gonna be enough here. I could probably make two corsets out of the amount of fabric I have here. So if this thing works, I can make another for a friend. So, so I'm just holding this up to show you an idea of what it's gonna look like when I actually make the corset. It's going to have a pink body and then this fancy lace that I bought is going to adorn the top and bottom of the corset, adding a color contrast and a super feminine, elegant feel. So the lace that I bought is called Milk Silk. I did look up and research, what is Milk Silk? So Milk Silk is a silk that's not made from silkworms, it's not a, a pure silk. It is like an affordable version. So think the way like rayon is an affordable version of things. Milk Silk is an affordable version of silk that you can use, but this is technically silk lace, but it's Milk Silk, so it's an affordable version. Um, but I think it's gonna do fine for what it is. And so here we have all our supplies assembled for making the corset. We have this ebook on the how to to do it. As requested by the ebook, we have the pattern that simply has to be cut out and taped together and ready to go. We have the fabric that we've chosen with some thread not one, but two packages of the lace that's gonna go across the top in an all natural milk silk to go with our 100% cotton herringbone printed fabric that we have selected for this project. Along with that, the busks that go on the front of the corset are in order, as you know. And then we have the grommet kit to assemble the back of the corset with. We have the spring steel whalebones. We have the synthetic 
German plastic whale boning, the twill tape for the boning if needed, and we have flat lacing for my corset and the ribbon for a friend's corset, and there we go. So we are ready to start this project. Thanks so much for watching my planning video with me. I look forward to sharing the next steps with you. I'll see you with your needle and thread the next time at the Victorian Thimble.